outside. Oh, we're getting played back. Let's we'll hurry up. Now they're outside. Oh, okay. As long as they're going on, on the water. Um, this is a half rate of solar. We'll keep them out behind and scoop them. By the time this is done, we can pick them back up. But I'll show you it's done. 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 It's done.
first presentation. Even without the extra labor of freezer, is much slower as the extra water needs to be disposed as well. It's not worth it for just an extra five percent. So overall, I would use the dry method and use the huge stoichiometric access of sodium bisulfate to so give the best yield, the highest concentration, and also use the least labor. Now, some additional notes before I go. A simple way to test if you have nitric acid and did monsters to wonder and grab a long reagent off the shelf is to react it with copper metal. The copper metal will dissolve and produce the characteristic orange or brown haze of nitric dioxide. While some other chemicals will also develop copper, extremely few will also generate nitric dioxide other than nitric acid. Moving on, the orange or brown haze you're seeing in the higher concentration of acid is nitric dioxide that resulted from the decomposition of nitric acid at high temperatures. While this also occurs at lower concentrations, the nitrogen dioxide reacts with water to reproduce nitric acid. At higher concentrations though, the reversible chemical reaction doesn't take a completion. Anyway, the actual amount of nitrogen dioxide is very small, and there's very little point in removing it since when you use nitric acid for oxidizing reactions like salt and copper, you're going to make nitrogen dioxide regardless. But if you really want to remove it because you have a special reaction, or because you want nice nitric acid for collection, you can reinstall the acid at lower pressure to reduce the boiling temperature and also reduce the composition. You can also remove the nitrogen dioxide by directly delivering in small amounts of urea, ammonia, and hydroxide. I'm using hydrogen peroxide here. Just keep adding a small portion until the nitrogen dioxide is gone. Hydrogen peroxide forces the nitrogen dioxide to convert into nitrogen acid. Ammonia and urea help destroy the nitrogen dioxide converting into nitrogen gas. The drawback of these methods is that the ammonia and the peroxide will add water to the acid, and if you overshoot and add too much ammonia or urea, the excess radiation will form a liquid nitrate that remains in acid. So you'll need to decide how to tell you. Anyway, so that's how you make nitric acid using pretty nitrate and sodium bisulfate. Thanks for watching. Special thank you to all my 
supporters on Patreon are making these science videos possible with the donations and the donations. Do not be a patron, but like to support the condition.
is actually an excellent yield secretory process. This makes oxalic acid a viable alternative to sulfuric acid and sodium bisulfate acid when making nitric acid. Oxalic acid is much less restricted, and I find this filtering process much easier to handle and clean than calcium sulfate acids when using sulfuric acid. Anyone that has made nitric acid with calcium sulfate byproducts can attack its absolutely awful potential to deal with. Many amateurs go through the trouble and expense of converting calcium nitrate into sodium or potassium nitrate, just so we don't have to deal with calcium sulfate. This oxalic acid process doesn't skip that. Now, personally, I still use sulfate in these methods for my nitric acid just because of cost, as I can get large quantities of sodium bisulfate. But if you can get large quantities of oxalic acid, then this oxalic based process might be a better option for making nitric acid, as calcium nitrate is also easy. The only major drawback is that that doesn't produce any nitric acid directly, since you need to dissolve the chemical in water first. But I've already shown how to upgrade nitric acid to a component that consumes nitric acid in the previous video.
oil is complete. That blue liquid is going to be full. Got everything sorted out here so we can figure out exactly what it is that we have. I've got some 14 free material in here. I've got 10 free stuff in here. And I got a ingot that we refined earlier, but it needs to be re-refined, so we're going to add this in this group. And I've got some super scrap here. It's probably I'm gonna count this as 12k gold. And because it's a mixture of 10k and 14 count this as 12k. This will be 24. This will be 10. And this will be 15. Here's all the gold filled stuff. Thank you. 
powder in there, leaving all the copper in the cold. We've got all the copper out of there. So we can glue. The silver's been pulled out.
Silver and gold. Now that we've lowered the gold content down around 25%, 6 trillion here. Now we can use the little gas to pull all the silver and the base metals out of here. Pulling the silver in the basement out. Hot, the weak nitric acid oils.